Now we're going to deploy Unity Connection as well as I am in presence. So we'll deploy a virtual machine from an OVA again. This one will be HQCUC. And I'll call it pub. Technically it's called a primary, not a publisher. A lot of people call it a publisher though. In CUCM it's publisher and subscribers. And in things like uh, contact center, I am in presence, Unity Connection, Cisco Emergency Responder. Those all have a primary and a secondary. They, but people call them publishers and subscribers though. I didn't select my file. We'll need to do that here. I got my CUC 11.5 OVA here. That's the data store I want. I agree to the licensing. We got to put this on server VLAN HQ. I'm going to go with the 146 gig thin provisioned. I don't want to power it on. Everything here looks good. We'll click finish. I'm going to create another virtual machine here. This one will be our I am in presence HQ IMP pub. Here's my I am in presence OVA. We'll put it on the server VLAN for headquarters. Let's see what this is talking about. Two 80 gig hard drives, 180 gig. I'll go with two. Let's see what this one's saying. Yep, we'll just go with that, 5,000. Uncheck the power on option and we'll say finished. At this point, we want to go and map these virtual machines to their ISO files. We'll go under here and change this to data store ISO file. We'll go into ISO files here, and then we're going to select the same file that was used for CUCM. Unity Connection and CUCM go in the same ISO file. Let's now hop over to our I am in presence and map that one to its ISO file as well. Not what I wanted to do. Let's go here. Now this one is going to have its own ISO file, which as you saw has the letters CUP, which is Cisco Unified Presence. It's an old name of the same system. So now we've got these two uh, mapped to their ISO files. Let's go ahead and power them on. We powered on IMMP. Unity Connections now powered on as well. And we can see from the screen back there that everything is all good. I did go and redeploy this virtual machine though. The OVA didn't seem to be playing well with me. So I went and got a different OVA. I got the 200 user OVA. Let's go ahead and jump in here and configure this Unity connection. I'm going to skip this just like we did on the CUCM installation. And then once this comes up, we're going to pretty much do everything the same as with CUCM, except we're going to change the IP or change the host name, change the IP address, anything that is specific to the Unity connection. Now you see that I I did choose the same ISO file, but if you go back to the CUCM installation, there was no option to select Unity connection, and that's because of the resources over here. Depending on how many uh, CPU, memory, disk space all those different resources, the combination of what you select is what allows the Unity connection to show up here on the screen or not. 
That's why earlier when we installed CUCM, it wasn't there. So we selected Cisco Unity Connection and we'll say, yes, I do want to install that version. Proceed here. Would you like to apply an upgrade patch? I don't want to do that. Basic installation is fine. Again, we'll toss this thing over into New York. I'm not changing the MTU. I'm not doing DHCP. Hostname HQCC pub. Let's confirm it. HQCC pub. IP address is 192.168.110.13. Yes, I will enable DNS. We'll get the simple username and password. Yes, this is the first node because earlier we did the CUCM. Now we're doing the Unity connection. So we'll plug in the IP address here, 192.168.110.1. Okay. I do not want to do SMTP admin. All right. So now unity connection is going to go and do its installation. Let's hop over and do the I am in presence. Now for I'm in presence, there is something that we're going to choose different from the CUCM and the unity connection. So here's the I am in P interface, which everything will look the same at first. It's only once we get a little bit into it, where we'll notice the difference between I'm in presence and unity connection and CUCM. So we'll hit tab here and then we'll hit enter. Yes, that's the version I want to install. Proceed, continue. Send it to New York. Okay, no, no. HQ IMP pub. Now, before we move forward, let's confirm those settings. HQ IMP pub 192.168.1108. 192.168.1108. Okay. Yes, I want to do that. Dot com. Okay. Now here's the thing that's different. It tells us this is not the first node in the cluster. You must first configure this server on the first node before you can proceed. Also, this node must have, ac have network access to the first node, which must be in service for the installation to complete successfully. So what they're telling us is we need to go over to our CUCM We log in over here. Now we go under system server and we can add either the IP address, the host name, or the fully qualified domain name of our I am in presence server here. And we have to select CCM I am in presence. I'm going to put in the pass in the uh, IP address. 192.168.110.8. Then we have to put in the I am in presence domain as well, which will be pcanane.com. We'll hit save. Now that that is done, we can go back to our installation and say, okay. The next phase is going to verify the network connectivity to the first node, to the publisher. If you select yes, then that means that the installation should pause after verifying that the network connectivity is good. I'm curious if anybody ever selects yes. Really just go ahead with no. CUCM publisher host name is HQCUCM pub. And the IP address is 192.168.110.5. This security password is how the server is going to authenticate against the database. So in the unified communications products, you have three different usernames, or sorry, two different usernames and three different passwords. 
the first username and password is the application. That's to log into the web interface. The other one is to log into the, the OS administration page or the CLI. And that one is called the OS admin. And then that that's the, the two username and password pairs. The third password doesn't have a username. It just is how you authenticate against the database. And that's called the security password. So now that I have that in here, I'll put uh, okay and I'll move forward. No SMTP and the platform configuration is complete. One more thing about that security password, whatever you put on the I am in presence here or on any sort of subscribers, it has to match the security password that was added to the, to the publisher during the installation of the publisher. I'll let these two run and I'll pause the recording for now. The installation of the two servers is complete. So now I just need to test logging in. That one's good. As soon as we see that command line interface is starting, please wait. We know it's good. Admin. Okay, so we're good on both of these and I'll end the video here. I'll see you in the next one.